Got another question here on the enthalpy and entropy topic. So this one focuses on enthalpy. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you wanted to try it first. Okay, so before I put the species in here, you can see I've written up the different processes that are taking place at each stage. So going from here to here, we've got the enthalpy change of formation of potassium sulfide. Now, if you look at the where the state symbols are going, there's no change here with the potassium. So this one here is where the change is. So this is the enthalpy change of atomization of the sulfur. The next thing we'd do is atomize this potassium. So what we're going to have at this level would be 2k gaseous atoms. Obviously the sulfur's already been turned into gaseous atoms. So that's what you needed to put in that box there. Next part of the process is the ionization of the atoms. So the first thing to happen is the two gaseous potassium atoms get turned into two gaseous potassium one plus ions. So that's the first ionization and energy of potassium. Next thing you've got to do is ionize the sulfur. It happens in two stages. So the first electron affinity is the first part of that. So that's where one of these electrons is going to go onto the sulfur gaseous atom. So we've already got the 2K plus gas, but we're going to generate an S minus gas, and there's one electron left. And then the next thing I'm going to do is the second electron affinity of sulfur. So that electron is going to go onto there. So you've got your 2K plus gas, but you've also got S2 minus gas. Next part is just the definition. So the definition of lattice enthalpy is the enthalpy change when one mole of an ionic lattice is formed from its gaseous ions. Moving on to the calculation now for the lattice enthalpy. So you'll notice I've put the numbers in and I've got the highlighted roots. So I'll just talk about the roots first of all. So there's two roots to go from elements to the lattice compound. There's the simple enthalpy change of formation or there's the sum of all these green ones, the way I've labelled that up. And within that root, you've got your unknown x. So in terms of values, you've got to be careful with this one here, because this is the atomization of potassium. So we've got two moles of potassium involved in the cycle, so we have to double that one. We've also got two times the first ionization energy. Again, we've got two moles of potassium being ionized. So I think that would be a common mistake um, nationally when this exam was done. So all we need to do is put the numbers in and solve for x now. So you should get a lattice enthalpy of minus 2116 kilojoules per mole. Now for part b, I don't know what you made of this, but I think it's quite nasty or awkward anyway, this one. So the best way to explain it, I think, is to draw these little diagrams here. So what I've done is, don't worry about scale because it's probably not great, but I've tried to replicate the um, sort of physical distance between the sort of centre of the positive ion and the centre of the negative ion in each case. So in sodium bromide, you've got 95 as the ionic radius for the sodium ion, so there to there. Bromide is 195 there to there. So the combined radius for that one is 290. I've done the same for the potassium iodide. The combined radius is 349. And for the final one, the combined radius is 329. And then if we think about the relative attractions between the oppositely charged ions in these three, then hopefully you can appreciate that the furthest apart ions are going to have the weakest attraction and therefore the lowest melting point. So the lowest melting point is going to be this one here, potassium iodide, then rubidium chloride, and then finally sodium bromide. So in terms of what to write, I would just say something like this. The strongest attraction is between the ions that are closest together, and so therefore more energy is going to be needed to overcome the attraction between these oppositely charged ions.